If you have a video that is cracking like this, you have to make a decision whether you're going to stop or to continue. And you need to undertake a risk that maybe the biggest impact that you would like to make sometimes you won't be able to deliver if you, uh, if the things happen like that. I'm going to talk to you within the next exactly 45 minutes about what is leadership uh, for me. We all uh, live different definitions. One of my favorites is leaders deliver. Uh, another one is the leader says what, ho what he's going to do. He does it, and when he has done it, he reports what uh, he has done. The ultimate leadership definition that I like uh, is the one that says, uh, he who delivers, he deserves the right to determine his or her own strategy. Being a leader is not a privilege. Uh, it is more a responsibility, and it is something that uh, is being nurtured through many, many years. How many of you are here younger than 30? How many of you are uh, older than 40? OK. Uh, I, started, I started my career at the age, uh, let me see how. Uh, I started my career at the age of 23, when I was uh, uh, graduating uh, Belgrade Law School. At that time, I didn't have a clue uh, where is my uh, career going to be. My friends from the childhood are telling me you were always a born entrepreneur. We knew from the times you went in the high school that actually your career is going to be entrepreneurial. Uh, from somewhere here, which is family, roots, genetics, the way how we are composed and what interests do we have, uh, the life passes very fast. I'm now 47, and I feel like being really 100 or older uh, by the number of projects and the initiatives that, under, that I undertook based on my own will and desire. Nobody forced me to do it, and this is what my family is telling me. Nobody is forcing you to take uh, so many risks and projects on you. You take normal and reasonable life, and you don't need to be an uh, adventurer and to be a risk taker. Uh, what a career of 20 years can consist of. I feel similarly attached to you because I am in a deep, in my heart, a tobacco guy. I started in Serbia, in Belgrade, for... Uh, this company here as a student when there were no tobacco representatives at that part. This was uh, 88. Uh, I was the third year of my studies at the Belgrade Law School, and my first job was merchandising. I started as a merchandiser and a sales promoter. I spent 10 years of a wonderful career uh, within tobacco company, living in Switzerland, St. Petersburg, Moscow, Almaty, in... Uh, and working in virtually every single country of Central and Eastern Europe in projects related to marketing, sales, and business development. Uh, I came back in 2001 uh, to redevelop the Coke business after the embargo, and I was responsible for uh, the operations of Coca-Cola, of the Coca-Cola company in Serbia, Montenegro, and Macedonia. In 2004, I decided I had enough of multinational corporate life, I want to start on my own. This was a good time for entrepreneurship, and I wanted to live my dream. That was my first turning point. Imagine someone who is 30, 30, 34, 36, who decides from the position of a very solid, senior, proven, perfect track record of uh, executive career to decide to start the business on his own. And that you are not fired and that you don't uh, 
you don't want to move, you make your own decision to start basically to land down from the 10,000 feet down to the ground in Belgrade and to say, well, as of tomorrow, I'm not going to have my secretaries, I'm not going to have my support, I'm not going to have my assistants, I'm not going to have an army of salespeople and sales conferences, I'm going to start my own business. And I started a company called Common Sense, which was uh, focused on the business development and making, creating new projects. I was always fascinated with creating a value. My first project was to start a property management company called Hausmeister. I didn't know anything about property management facility and engineering because this is not my background. I made a very successful business. I sold it a year and a half later, 50% uh, and another 50% five years later with a multiple uh, revenue of probably 10 to 15 times from what I uh, initially invested. This company operates successfully in Serbia today employs about 50 to 100 people and serves most of these properties, probably including the ones where you sit today. I started another business where I say, now I'm going to teach other people how to start their own businesses because I'm fascinated with entrepreneurship and made a company called Budis Vojcovic. This company survived, was not a success. Then I made another company called Assistel, which is tele-assistance to elderly people. This is what we would call in the porter's terminology, a dog company. For seven years, we invested money. We tried to make it a successful business, and we basically, we failed. In 2009, uh, I started Mokragora School of Management, and this is now fourth year of operation. Over the last four years, three, full three years, we had over 2,000 people uh, who participated on our programs. We started this year with executive uh, MBA studies, and uh, we hope that next year we will build a campus in Mokragora and that we will start spreading the idea about executive development in Mokragora and the Serbian management school outside of the borders of Serbia. In the meantime, I managed to uh, do my executive MBA uh, trium. I'm working on my PhD at the Faculty of Organizational Science in, uh, in Serbia. And last but not the least, I uh, managed for three years Politica newspapers and magazines, the company that was uh, uh, jointly owned by VATS and the Serbian government. I lived in different countries. I uh, managed and worked in the large multinational companies when I had uh, most of my career. I worked for the large Serbian companies and a very complex one. I worked for the small companies. I develop, developed my own businesses. And this is what I learned. This is my alphabet of leadership. You have to be able to achieve. You have to be achiever if you want to make something in your life. The ones who are not achievers, uh, they don't go the long way. You have to activate. You have to activate yourself with ideas. You have to activate others. You have to appreciate. You have to appreciate the world around you. You have to appreciate people with whom you work. And every day and every activity that you do, actually, you do have to appreciate. What you did today is very appreciative. If this virus and this model could be spread in the Serbia, in the country where we live, I'm sure this would be a better place. You need to be able to act. When nobody wants to act and the act is required, someone needs to act. The leader needs to act and to take action. You have to be bold in leadership. Uh, not bold like I am, not in a physical sense, but you have to be bold when you need to make a tough decisions. The leaders are not the BS people. The leaders are the ones who are able to convey the vision and to deliver results. Therefore, they have to be straight when the things are good and straight when, they, when the criticism <coughs> is required. They have to be brave because the world, the progress is made out of brave people, the ones who are taking risks and who are able to see unforeseen and to take ahead a group. They have to be brave. The people who are not brave, they don't dare to do this. 
And they have to believe. Because who is going to believe to a leader if he doesn't believe to himself in the idea? I'm sure you all saw the entrepreneurship and the leadership videos on the YouTube, where basically a leader is a lunatic. The first leader and the first entrepreneur is the one who stands in the front and then making a fool of himself until several others join him in the group. And then it becomes the movement. This is how the big companies created. This is how the big ideas were created. What was the garage business in California when Apple was made and the others if it was not made based on the few lunatics who said, well, I'm not going to study anymore any of these fancy universities. I'm going to work in the garage. I'm not going to work for a quarter of a million dollars or something, whatever, where the packages for these highly educated kids. But I'm going to do my own dream. Clear, culture, common and character. Uh, leader needs to be clear in communication, in what he wants, where he wants to go, where he wants his people to go, where the business needs to go. He needs to create a culture. Every organization, even a corporate organization, multinationals like you are, they have a culture that is blended by its leadership. A top team, top team changes in the region or in the division or in the country. There is a slight spices of the culture that are changing as well. This is beauty and this is what makes really the leadership difference. Leader has to be a character. Have you ever seen a leader who doesn't have a character? These leaders don't last long. And leader has to have always what is a common, what is common in mind? What is this that makes us all, what is our common interests? <coughs> a determination. We discussed this morning with Lecic. There are many more situations in life when you fail than when you succeed. But we don't want to conf we don't want to confess it to each other. We don't want to say when we fail. We only share with us and the others our successes. Uh, to be able to go and grow through the failures, you have to be determined. You have to be aware that the things are not going to be successful from the first one. That from the very first moment, you are not going to make it. Actually. The most biggest entrepreneurs were actually a serial failures before. If you read the CVs of the successful people, guess what? In the most of their CVs, you will find that they had a whole line of a different failures that they have achieved, be, being it in a private or in their professional life. Diligent. You take responsibility. You take responsibility for yourself. You take responsibility for the wealth and the value of the company or the team that you run. You take responsibility of the families of the people who work with you. You have to be diligent. Irresponsible and non-diligent leadership does not exist. And you have to have drive. We all work. What is the average? days, number of days, days a year we work. 220 days or something? Or 180? 220, I think. I mean, are we, do we have a drive every single day during the 220 days or no? Each of us here in the room and everywhere you have, everyone has an ups and downs. You don't feel like working every day with the same drive and every enthusiasm. The idea of the leadership and a good leader is to recognize when people are falling down to help them go up again. And this is where drive is important. As we say, there is one of these proverbs in Serbian, difficult things we do immediately. For the impossible things, we take a little bit more time. Empathy. You talked this morning around various workshops about emotional intelligence. One of the key elements for someone who would like to become a good leader is to have an empathy. To have a feeling and to have understanding for the surrounding and for, for the people who are working around, around us. Ethics. 
it's becoming more important than ever, and not only in this country and our culture, but also in, in every single continent. We realize that the leadership, the old paradigm of leadership, is not valid anymore. In fact, there is a new paradigm of leadership, which is called the triple, bo triple bottom line, where ethics is basically embedded in all of those triple elements. Experience. Who can be a leader without... Huh. Has anyone been a, a, a member of this movement called Young Leaders? No, thank you. Good. I'm happy for that. Because there is no bigger contradiction than being a young leader or being a young expert. How can you be a young expert or a young leader without experience? Because what makes you expert, what makes you leader is actually the mileage, the number of different situations that you run through before you gained enough confidence that other people respect you for what you did. And enthusiasm is an important element of leadership as well. Fight, feel, follow, and free. Leaders have to feel free when they think, when they fight for their ideas, and when they create the agenda for the group. They also have to feel the way how the group feels, the way what will happen if there, is a, if there is not a positive outcome? What happens if we fail? What consequences are we going to have and what consequences will it take for the whole team? How do people feel on Friday afternoon when they have a leadership speech? That's the responsibility of a leader to think how can you mingle all of that and connect that it makes sense and that at the end of the day gives a good bottom line. And one thing that uh, I'm sure uh, you were able to, to see in the video uh, with uh, Nikola Pavicis, who says a, a good manager has to be a good listener. I mean, he's a guy who's 70-something, and uh, some of you probably know him. He's one of the few very reputable old business leaders that we have uh, uh, left in Serbia and that do not have an ambiguous career or CV. Uh, a good leader is first a good follower. When I was doing an interviews for the jobs for the, with the younger managers, they say, why do you want to go in the management? You say, well, because uh, I am not good at listening. I am good at managing and leading, but I have a problem with the listening. This is the similar uh, type of misconception as when you ask someone who works in marketing, you ask a graduate from the Belgrade University from the economy, and says, what do you want to do? And they tell, well, I would like to have some job in marketing or in PR. G, grow, goals, generate, generous. I like here generous. Uh, generosity is an important attribute of leadership, at least from my perspective. You need to share the success. You need to share with the people, not only to share the vision, you need to share the results. The people who are around you, when the results are achieved, they have to feel it. And it's not only material results, it's emotional, it's contribution in terms of uh, uh, promotions or the achievements that they've made, or basically nurturing their own career. We have seen so many times that the people, the leaders are not able to, de to develop the people who are under them. And they, we often ask ourselves, why do we have successors? Why when some business leader in our uh, uh, local business culture, when someone disappears or, God forbid, gets arrested, then everybody wonders that the whole system will collapse? Why? Because they are not generous in sharing the responsibilities among, the, um, among each other. Grow. Grow has a multi multi-effect. Growing, you cannot become a leader if you don't grow yourself professionally, uh, morally, and experientially. You cannot become a good leader if you don't do it to other people as well. The number of years, the way the years are accumulating, your success is actually measured by how many good people 
you developed and how many people had a successful careers because you had a chance to spend some time with them and they had a chance to make you better and you help them become better themselves. It's a great asset of leadership. Humor. How many times when I was in the most difficult situations in my life and they were, there were not one situation, trust me. Even in the corporate life, it was not everything easy. Although I remember these times compared to entrepreneurship in, in, uh, in Serbia as really being extremely romantic and nice. Uh, you have a family, they are ordering you a transfer, you know that you need to move, you just move from one place to another, your wife just learned where is the supermarket and where she can find the pediatrician for the child that is one year old and you are ready to move to another location because it's good for your career. It's a lot of sleepless nights and you wonder and you ask, what am I doing to my family? What am I doing to myself? You just put your roots a little bit in a city, say, St. Petersburg, and then they tell you six months later, fantastic opportunity for your career, now we want you to move to Moscow. The container is just unpacked. You found where are your shirts, where is TV, where are your books, and this, and like this you live for 10 years. Uh, or you are in entrepreneurship, and guess what? The money is not flowing every month. You can get salaries only when you invoice, only when you do something, and then the customers are happy, and then you send them an invoice, and then if they pay. So only if there is on the bank account money and you have, at the end of the month you can pay salaries. It's an amazing shock. And I don't want to BS you how many times in 10 years I was scratching my head asking, gee, man, why do I need this? Why do I need to wonder again, how are we going to pay the salaries to these people, including myself? And you know what makes you feel good? If you have a little bit of sense of humor, you say, well, you know, what can we do? You make some joke, you make some fun, you all of a sudden you cheer everybody, and then the most of the problems somehow they get resolved by themselves. It's amazing how many complicated situations can be actually solved just by the fact of the positive, normal, lively attitude. Without fear, without panic, without any... And this, the older you get, the more experience you get, the more, in the more relative sense you take it. So you probably won't get used to that. Honor. It's an important... Uh, part of a leadership from my perspective. You need to know you are what you do. I am what I do with every single project and every single job that I had in my 20 something years of career. The sense of honor was very highly ranked in my character. The way how am I perceived by other people, the way I am perceived for the jobs that I do, the, the way the deliverables that I'm doing, uh, that I'm giving to a job. Huh. Influence, initiative, intuition, intrinsic. Let's touch base on intrinsic. You know what is intrinsic? What's underneath? What's inside us? Don't tell me what you tell me what I see. Tell me what I don't see. I want to know what's inside. I want to know what's behind. I want to know why. I want to understand what moves and motivates people and processes and why we make the decisions the way we make them. This is intrinsic. It's important for leadership. We sit in the room, 50 of us. I mean, I'm sure we could find broadly five different groups of motivators that would be similar, but at the end of the day, the different triggers for the motives of each of us would have some separate spices and the proportions. One has to look after that, the one who understands that, 
the one who has time to devote to that, he is able to reach further than the ones who is giving so-called blanket solutions. Everybody, this type of everybody approach is an easy approach. Intrinsic. Intuition. Who? Uh, you all did my bricks. Who is intuitive? Who is... Who has I in the Myers-Briggs, in the Briggs-Myers testing? I'm sure you did it. In, intuition. The older we grow, the more intuitive we become. Why? Because it comes, provided that we are not women. Because women are naturally intuitive. It's a God's gift. So you have a woman in management or in leadership. Uh, she's already advantaged in terms of the man, because they have a more intuitive mind. Intuitive mind is more important for the leadership jobs. We men, us men, we can develop intuition all, only by experience and only by number and number of different situations that were behind so that we are able to predict something that will have, happen in the future. Uh, I know it might sound strange, but sometimes in that respect, I wish to have if I have a woman's brain because I find it's very intuition is an excellent ingredient. Influence. Uh, more and more decisions in life are not made by I order you to do so. I ask you. I request. Uh, I urge. The more we go into the direction of so-called collective leadership and where I have to convince you that this is important, necessary, and useful in order to get the better results. Dictative leadership or authoritative leadership is not effective leadership. Influencing leadership, mobilizing leadership is something that gives much better results. Huh. Joy, joke, job, and justice. If you, if you make, don't do the jobs that you don't like. Don't do the jobs that you don't like uh, for a long time. Don't do jobs that you hate at all. Uh, look at the jobs that you uh, that you, that are new to you, look with an interest and look with a curiosity and try to find a positive thing in that. From my experience, out of God knows how many job descriptions I had in my corporate and entrepreneurial career, there were hardly a few jobs that I didn't find something that I didn't like in there. Why? Because I am a workaholic. I like my job. I am what I do. And when I was organizing promotions in uh, uh, Kostinesti in 92 in Romania, I loved what I did. When I was doing uh, a merchandising in, uh, in, in Belgrade in, uh, in 88, visiting kiosks, when my whole family was telling me, why are you visiting here? So you are doing, my grandmother was telling me, you are doing two mistakes. A, you are studying law, which means you are going to be a crook, because all the lawyers in Vojvodina were perceived as a crooks. And the second is, he is now visiting kiosks. For me, I loved that job. For me, it was, it was a magic of communication. The first lessons that I learned about how to communicate with the people is how to convince the women working in the kiosk to put a sticker right in front of their view above the little counter where they were selling cigarettes. For me, that was a mental game. I approach around, I look, I see, is she young? What age is she? What would be the motives that I could basically convert, convince her to achieve what my task is? I've heard today some of some of you, of, from you. I enjoy my job because I like making successes. This is the sentence you said. It's a good attitude. That's the attitude. Huh. 
justice. No kin keep kindness. No leadership can be achieved if you don't know things. Particularly important lesson for the younger people who think that they can have accelerated career without their experience. No promotions ahead of time. Career growth that is faster than natural is not good for the career. A good leaders will not promote their subordinates if they are not ready. I'm sure you have heard many times, you are not ready. You have to be ready. You have to know uh, professionally, you have to be socially and culturally ready to grow in your career. We witnessed in this part of the world since the year 2000, particularly in the banking sector, unbelievable growth of careers where you, know, you start as a young economist and five years later you become a member of executive board of some of the bank. And I'm sure you have friends uh, working there. They, nobody did them a favor. And you will see, because career is not something that is lasting three or five or 10 or 15 years. A good career, particularly for my generation and for your generation even more so, <coughs> it's easily 40 years. You are not going to get retired anymore at 55 or 60. I'm not going to get re retired at 60. We are going to work longer and we have to work smarter. Therefore, we have to develop our career visor. Uh, huh, keep. Let me touch base of keep. Keep the promise, keep the secret. Uh, keep, keep your word. Uh, don't go out and talk uh, with the dirty laundry about what's happening in your company, in your family, in your team. What you promise, do it. Uh, this keep, there is another nice uh, proverb there. Have a uh, handshake quality. Handshake quality is if I promise I'm going to deliver. I don't need the contract. Which is in very many cases contrary to our culture and the mentality. Lead, lean, love, and leave. Leave. You need to know when to leave. You need to know when to leave from the office, which is, I guess, going to be in 10 minutes for you. You need to know when to leave a job, when you finished your job, when I finished the project, when my team can work without me. When I notice that the company that I developed, Hausmeister, can exist without me, I said, I, we don't need me. I am a developer. I am there as an entrepreneur with you a year and a half. This was more than enough. And I was right. You need to know when you are going to cut. You need to love. <coughs> Leadership is an emotional exercise person who doesn't love people and the person who is not lovable by the people huh, is not going to be happy in leadership. It's not going to be happy working with the people. Lean. Leadership is a lean exercise. Lean for me means every day how can I make things more effective? How can I make things more productive? How can we do things smarter? Not necessarily cheaper. The lean is usually used in the value chain and distribution and the logistics. How can we optimize and cut, cut costs? No. Lean is how can we do things smarter every day. And I see you have this in the smoking room, this suggestion uh, materials who are basically stimulating this attitude. Master, mission, motivate, manipulate. Hmm. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to skip this because you know it. You have to master what you do. Not only to know. Knowledge is not enough. To be, there are many people who have knowledge. All of you have knowledge. It's not enough. You need to master it to be a good leader. 
It's above and beyond knowledge. It's knowledge plus intuition plus experience plus many other elements. But this is interesting. People often ask me, uh, is there manipulation leadership? Or my team is asking me from time to time, you manipulated us. Uh, yeah, manipulation exists in leadership. And manipulation in leadership is not a negative attitude. Sometimes you know things that you cannot share with your people, that you cannot share with your team for their own good. And this is not manipulation. You often, I'm sure you have this corporate culture which is saying, well, there are not all the things that you need to know at the moment or that we can share with you at the moment, but you need to trust that certain things need to be done. Hmm. Nourish, negotiate, navigate, and nurture. Navigation is, where do we go? In which direction goes the ship? In my organization, in my team, they tell me, listen, you don't need to do anything operationally. The only thing we need you is to navigate. You do the vision, you do the big things, and we are going to do everything that is operational, which is the role that I like. Nourish. What you do is, uh, today, is nourishing. It's an excellent example, a vivid example of nourishing. All diversity of the different people who came and had a chance to talk to you, it's a superb privilege. Uh, nurture. Negotiate. Uh, probably one-third of the leadership role is negotiations, is dealing between the requirements and expectations, between possible uh, and desirable, and uh, moving the targets on the regular basis in order to reach there. This is the wisdom of leadership. You remember that we uh, had, in, as we were kids, that leaders that were able to make compromises this was not a leadership quality. A leadership quality in former Yugoslavia in our country was he was uncompromising. You remember that they were on the news when they say, well, the hero this and they died, he was a uh, best compromise Nivorac. He was a person, his leadership competency was that he was not able to make compromises. These times are gone. It's all about negotiations. It's all about convincing. Orchestrate, observe, optimist, and opportunity. First to see, first to go, first to grab uh, about opportunity. I sit and watch. I am able to observe. I am able to learn from observing. Orchestrate. It's like leading the orchestra. You have different groups, different instruments, different roles. Another part, one part of the orchestra is giving one sort of rhythm. Another one is giving another one. How to make it all a music. That's a leadership about. An optimist, particularly when the times are tough. I was two days ago at the Chamber of Commerce talking about economical revival with some uh, professors and Chamber of Commerce of Serbia organized it. And everybody speaks there, and these are all people who should be our leaders in a sense of at least uh, economical expertise. And they talk like that this was obituary ceremony. It's like commemoratia. And I ask them, well, we're not going to reach far if we every time you see every three months everybody is like, uh, you know, we just need to get dressed in black and then we do, uh, we do commemoration. It's a, it's a rehearsal of commemorative session. Why do you do this? Why do you hurt yourself? And it's not going to get better by you being so uh, miserable. <coughs> Praise, promote, protect and punish. Move people above. Promote successes. Praise and punish when needed. 
uh, there are leaders who says, well, I cannot punish. Sometimes you have to send a bad message. Not only to punish, you need to fire, you need to, uh, to, be, a, you need to be a bad cop. That's also, uh, that's also leadership. Quality, question, quintessential, and quit. Die for the quality. Only excellent is good enough. Every time the things can be done better. Question, everything and everybody. Asking question is a good thing. Uh, you are not a nuisance if you ask your people questions. I learned over time a technique that I ask questions diagonally. I talk to some of my younger associates and in order to check how the things are going, I'm not asking for rehearsal. I am intentionally asking some question that would be lateral question just to double check if she or her, he did the good due diligence. And if I get an answer, I feel confident. The worst thing that can happen, and that happens often among the younger people, particularly younger generations who are learning, is this typical attitude. Oh, I didn't think of that. Gee, you have to think of everything. That's the planning. That's ant anticipation. Quintessential. This is an important world. Word And this word is getting more important as the younger generation grow up. Why? Because in the previous times, we could buy analytical and synthetic data. There were no so much data available. The times that we live in, we are flooded with data. You go on the internet, you can find everything and anything. You can find any single piece of leadership of, or management of emotional intelligence on anything that you are interested in today that you want to learn. It's available mostly for free. Why are we making so many stupid decisions then? Why are we acting so stupidly when more than ever the information is available? Because the younger generations are be becoming in in a great difficulty to define what is quintessential, to define what is important from all of this rubbish of information. The analytical and concluding and subliminal part of digesting all information that is nowadays available is becoming a complicated task. So for the children that are growing now, it will not be important anymore as it used to be for us to learn by heart the years, who was born and what was fight and what was this and that and all the sorts of formula, will be only the way how to distinguish important of non-important. How to, to understand what is the quintessence, which is basically the way of thinking. Don't bother your brain with the unnecessary quantity of information. The data is nothing. The conclusion is everything. You need to know when to quit. So I guess I'm going to quit very soon. Realistic, responsible, respect, and run. Smart, stable, strong, and sensitive. Sensitive is a word that is worth spending a few seconds. We all think that the leaders are tough. And that the leaders have to display always stamina and rigor and uh, that they are kind of, you know, from the old paradigm of leadership. Modern leaders are sensitive. They have to show emotions. They have to be emotional. They also need and want to be loved as well. Being a CEO in a company doesn't mean that you don't need emotions that you don't want that people are talking normally to you, that they ask you how are you and not only to brown nose you. How many times it happened in my career that you are somewhere sitting at the top, the moment you're not there anymore, nobody's calling you. I couldn't get rid of admirers when I was in 2001 or 2002 the GM of Coke here. And my telephone was ringing with all of my lovable uh, friends. The moment I decided to start, my own, to start my own business, I could easily throw the phone away.
Stability is an important word. It's continuation. You keep the anchor of the organization. If you are unstable, the organization is unstable. Tough, trust, teach, tactical. Leaders are not only strategic, they have to be tactical. They are saying that the leaders are only thinking about strategy and uh, only about abstract and big things. No. Leaders has to be a leader, ha leader has to be a good tactical player as well. And usually, when in the earlier years of his career, or I'm speaking of myself, uh, it helps me a lot, my operational experience that I had during the first 10 years when I didn't even know that I'm going to enter in the waters of leadership. Because you can show to the people by example how the things are done. Give you a small example. Uh, I was not very good in Excel, in the pro software, in the program, for many years. Because uh, somehow it happened that I always had someone who is more junior than I am who could do all the Excel things for me. Three years ago, I got really mad, mad. And I said, well, I'm now going to learn Excel. I'm doing all the projections for my business myself and all of my younger associates who used to do it for me before, they talked to me about with a great admiration. Can you imagine? He decided that he will learn Excel in the age of 47 and he's really doing it well. With all the macros and all of this, it's, it's good to be tactical. One should never lose it from his mind. Unite, unique, unknown and universal. I believe that leadership is unique, and I believe that everyone who is in the leadership position has a unique character, and that he, should, he or she should portray the uniqueness of the character, because this is the beauty of leadership. Even in the large companies such, uh, such your, your company is, uniqueness is a good thing. Being different is nice and is good. Victory. Versatile, vision, and values. I like from this few words on we versatile. I think the more versatile you, we are as a characters, as an experiences, as a genders, as you know, preferences, as political views, the better it is for the organization. Monolith organizations are boring. The, organiz the teams where we all think the same way are dull organizations. We have to be different. It's good to be different. Will, win, word, and way. Uh, where there is a will, there is a way, says an old English proverb. Uh, leaders have to be responsible to find a way. Extrovert, eccentric, and extraordinary. A good leadership, successful leadership is extraordinary leadership. The ones who made extraordinary results for their organizations are extraordinary people. If we want to achieve extra, we have to be extra. We cannot put an average effort for an extra result. Does not work. How we become extra? Usually because we put an extra effort, unfortunately. So it doesn't get by, you know, someone bor was born yesterday and he became uh, extra personality. It's being made. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to imagine introvert leader. Introvert leaders, particularly in the businesses that are fast-moving consumer goods, are not in the easy positions, dealing with the people, dealing with the large organizations, it helps if you are extrovert. Yes, yield, young, and year-to-date. I hate year-to-date, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, the good thing is entrepreneurship is when you have your, you can basically move your own year-to-date in order to boost your optimism when the sales are going bad. I just changed my plan, and I say, well, 
I did the wrong plan, so I'm not waiting for the middle of the year for the revised forecast or the original budget or whatever abbreviations you have. Say, February, mm, I really missed it. Move it down for 50%. So, uh, year to date. Uh, young, is young in mind. Think the leadership. When you are happy with the organization where you work, when the organization is happy with you, when you have this equilibrium, leadership is continuing being young. I feel younger with the age of 47 and more interested in the things than I was at the age of 27. At the age of 27, I was dreaming to have my own law office and to be a lawyer somewhere in the downtown Belgrade and to work by myself thinking of how am I going to service foreign companies in the commercial and business law. It's crazy. I learned to uh, snowboard three years ago. Uh, I excel, I already mentioned. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's being young in, uh, in the brain. And if you're young in the brain, you become overall younger. Or at least, I think so. <laughs> and believe it or not, thanks God that this is not Cyrillic, but it's alphabet, so <laughs> it's a little bit shorter. <laughs> Zoom, zero, zest and zeal. You have to have zest to make things happen. You have to have what the Russians are calling, calling I don't know what uh, Katja can tell this, is Zumenka. I don't know. That's a little piece, little spice that makes you being really outstanding, having a great energy. You have to, huh, you have to be able to start from zero. And you have to zoom things. It's not only a bird perspective. It's to be able to go from zoom in, zoom out, and then continuously like that to measure yourself and the people and the <coughs> results that you achieve. I am afraid this is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much, and I wish you a lovely weekend. Uh, sharing with us your formula, your alphabet.